Don't call her cute. Don't call her feisty. She's a rebel. She is nasty. She is brave. She is a honey sweetie sugar pie baby. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. Don't you ever say that she was well behaved. And don't you ever say that she was well behaved. Okay, let me tell you about these overalls. Oh yeah. Arrow's wearing very cool velvet overalls. They're purple velvet overalls, and they make me feel like a woman in, like, a real, like, woman-y way. You know what I mean? Like, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, Curves. hey, girl. It's ironic because overalls are mostly worn by babies. <laughs> and farmers. <laughs> and farmers, neither of which are typically women. And baby farmers. <laughs> baby farmers. <laughs> I have to put overalls on the kid I babysit, like so much it's very difficult it's a lot of squirming so Um, these overalls i think they were my aunt's mm. and my aunt whenever she goes through her closet gives all those clothes to my mom Mm. and my mom goes through them and whatever she doesn't like she gives to me to go through cool and so when i saw these i was so excited and i put them on today and i was feeling real good like i got i got dressed and I had been dog walking all day. I put, I showered and I put on my makeup and even Shaki was like, you look good. And the, like, you know, when like somebody you've been dating for three years, Recognizes like, your humanity. So, yeah. Still thinks you're <laughs> attractive. It's like yeah. very nice. And then I was getting ready to go to a show and I sat down and I leaned over to put on my boots and boop, <laughs> the back of it ripped off because <gasps> they are too small for me. Because my mom and aunt are both five foot one and a hundred pounds. Wait. And so the back of it, this little, the part, I, gotta, you do? I just have to sew it on. But I, I was like, I, I'm already going to the show. So I just tucked it in. But when I sit, it comes oh, up. No. And I, I was like, because I felt so good and then immediately felt so self-conscious. Oh, no. And these purple velvet overalls. Oh, my God. They look good, though. You can Thank just you. Get like a little piece of el- like uh, elastic or something to put there. I'm just gonna sew it. I think if I, I don't really know how to sew, but I know enough. Yeah. And I think I can YouTube it. Yeah. To really figure out how but to finish if you the sew stitch. It, is it just gonna pop again, or you should sew it higher up. I think no. I think it won't pop again as long as I just never sit again. Oh. While that's wearing perfect. them, wow. or sit very slowly. I think I have to <laughs> sit. I have to ease into it. <laughs> feels like perhaps there's like a better solution i mean they're just too small like that's all that i mean it's too just, i feel like you could, if you attach some kind of like st- like elastic between the two parts so that it stretches maybe like a suspender type that like yeah, a like, like a, two buttons like what like pregnant a women use for their uh for their pants like the expanders yeah, like yeah maybe it's time for that I mean, it's just that they're short. I think it's a height thing more than it's, anything. I mean, it's it's everything. Like they are, they are. Too, they pull at the groin. Mm. I'm aware. It's just they they. If you're not, it's dark enough that you can't really see it unless That's you're true. really looking for it. And they look. I look so good in them. I love my them. butt. Looks great, and it's not something I would normally wear. And I I like them, but yeah. they turned on me today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's okay. It's been you know been a week why wouldn't this happen i know um should we talk about rejection yeah and what it's how like? you doing i don't know it's this one was particularly hard in a way that Ariel i didn't expect it to from a job a writing job which happens a We've lot i've been there but it does feel every time it somehow you think that maybe you'll get sometimes you get used to it and sometimes you're like whatever like there was that one we did at the end of the year that YouTube one? Yeah, which I guess was for something that's kind of silly. But I kind of had fun writing it and kind of thought I had a chance, and then it was crickets, never heard anything. I, and I forgot about it. Yeah, I forgot about that one. It was like, all right, well, I didn't forget about it, actually. I thought about it, and I thought, I didn't get this, but okay. And it was fine, I guess. But this one, I guess, was one you really wanted. It's hard with the shows that you care about. Yeah, the shows that you actually you like. Want, and look yeah. like... <sighs> And that someone recommended you for, yeah. but all the, I mean, I know two other really smart, funny women who, d- who didn't get it either. And so. I had a lot of conflicted feelings about that because when I, so I got the email yesterday saying like, 
you know, we had over 100 people submit and we only had one position. And so I was like, okay, well, that means that there was less than a 1% chance of me getting it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there was also less than 1% chance of the person who got it getting it. Mm -hmm. So like, I felt that way. You got it? No. Mm -hmm. And then I immediately had to go and take my first Spanish Spanish citizenship test. Oh. <laughs> like I was studying, I was at a pizza place killing time, study, like studying my <gasps> flashcards when, when I got email. that email. And then I had to go take this test. Was the test hard? Um, it wasn't really that hard. There were, I think like half the questions I didn't recognize from the study guide, but I made a good enough guess and yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I passed. Is it like multiple choice? Yeah, it's multiple choice and you only have to get 15 out of 25, right? Is it all in Spanish? Yeah, but, oh, but that's fine. Yeah. Um, cool. But so, but then, and so I just had to like file away the rejection. Like I didn't get Ugh, to process it at all. I just had to like sucks. shove, which I am very good at compartmentalizing and you shoving are, things away. It's probably not healthy. Not at all. And then I got home and told Shaki and then sort of like... I dicked around for a little bit and then and he was like do you want anything do you want like whiskey and I was like no I don't want anything and then I was like I want that job yeah. and then I just started crying and this is the first one I've ever cried oh, from no. and so I think it just it just hurt more because I it's also winter yeah and winter always does that and honestly like once a year I have sort of a breakdown of like maybe I can't do this yeah. and then it passes and it never happens in the summer it's only ever <laughs> in the winter yeah so it didn't happen in New Orleans really no but in New Orleans like in New Orleans all you see are possibilities yeah that's Oops, true. sorry my chin just hit the mic I didn't hear it okay um yeah that's true you, the, the harsh reality of this business <laughs> so it's just like yeah the rejection oh that sucks I mean, it's good that I care. Yeah. But. And it's nice that they told you. It's I mean, very geez, nice. That I really appreciate they it. I tell you. Um, but it's like. It's awful. And I get that the, it's part of this business. Like, it's not supposed to be easy. Yeah. This is what happens. It is what it is. It's just feelings are really hard, and I have a lot of them right now. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. It will come. The fact that you were, like, asked to do this one means that you're on people's radar. Yeah. And, and then I know. just started thinking about, like, all the women who we learn about and all the rejection they probably faced. And yeah. I was like, they still did great. Yeah. I think I also have this false notion. Sorry, I'm talking so much. No, it's but, like, fine. I'm, like, very tired and... And the thing I was going to tell you, pause, we'll go back. Every year, my dad and his friend that he grew up with walk the entire length of Broadway from like the oh. tip of Manhattan, like the both tips of Manhattan. And they're doing it tomorrow. And it's like the first time that I've been free. And so I'm, I agreed to do it with them. But I have to be in the Bronx at 830. <laughs> oh, how do you how? So you have to we, leave here at what, seven? I'm going to leave at 7.30. Okay. Um, How far of a walk is that? 13 and a half miles. Okay. Are you going to do the whole thing with them? I think so. That's real. That's um, a really I sweet thing. I have to record thing. a podcast at, like later that night. Oh, are you cheating on me with another podcast? No, it's a podcast about the show Chopped. <laughs> that guy, David Piccolomini, like posted something that was like, who likes Chopped? And I was like, I do. And then he was like, do you want to do the podcast? And I was like, okay. And... I mean, it's good to do it. Now I'm like, oh, I'm probably going to be so... I agreed to it before I thought about doing this. And now I'm like, I'm going to be so tired. I'm going to want to just go home. Or you might be very invigorated by all the things that you see. Yeah. And fall in love with the city all over again. And everything. Honestly, part of me is like, I don't know. <laughs> of your, of your small metaphor, pockets. My two small pockets. My <laughs> $20 and $1 bills. Oh, no. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going to be, please talk. I'm going to go to sleep immediately after we tape this. Okay. And uh, that's it. I mean, the end of the story is just that I cried and I then said I would actually like that whiskey. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. You and then have I, have I got drunk and we watched two episodes of Top Chef. And that's good. And then he and I. At um, least you have someone to like be there for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Imagine, <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, and your text was very sweet. Like, I, last night yeah. made me realize like I have a very Ugh. good support system, and your text was really sweet. Oh, no problem, dude. I mean, you're. I'm not worried about you. You and the, I, mean, I don't want to like blast nice. the other person who's my friend who didn't get this job. Well, two people I know, but one the other one 
another friend of mine who didn't get this job you know who it is i don't know hey girl was like <laughs> came came over last night and was also hella depressed about it and other stuff too and uh and i was just, i don't know i don't i'm not worried about either of you guys i'm really not that's nice it's just it's so hot like tough, though getting that first one is so hot like once you have the first one it's so much easier to get the rest yeah it's just so hard to get that fucking first one job yeah yeah yes and no it depends for something like that show probably yeah but but if you're writing the f- post that's very <laughs> easy yeah, yeah, to yeah, get yeah. it on your first try <laughs> i know that woman we all need to like figure out her secret just write a movie about the Washington Post. Just write a just write a movie about a dying industry, and somebody will make it a movie. That's a great idea. What other dying coal? Let's write a coal movie. Ooh. <laughs> Did you see Scotland Green's uh, post uh, today? It was no. very, or maybe it was yesterday. It. And I'm gonna butcher it, but it was basically just like, how come all the attention is on coal? Bring my blockbuster job back. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. I've been thinking a lot lately about how much of a role video stores played in my young life. Like that was honestly so impactful to me. We would go to the video store every week and I would only want to watch movies that had kids in them. That was my <laughs> You've always been about representation. I literally am only interested in things that <laughs> where I recognize myself in the film. Like now I only want like now I've I recently joined a Facebook group for like comedians that's like not all women. And it feels deeply uncomfortable, like every time mm. a man posts. But someone told me to get in it because apparently there's like work in there, but it's mostly LA based. I'll send you the link, but I don't know. But there's like men posting, and I'm like, what are these men doing posting in this group? <laughs> this isn't I, for what this is for. I think if men realized how many secret lady Facebook groups there are. Oh God, I'm in too many. They I'm need in to a consolidate. Lot. It's really they nice. Need, I know. <laughs> it's a little hard to keep up. Like oh, I'm yeah. in like seven. Especially something. when drama happens. I know. Yeah, yeah. It's fun when the drama happens. But then some of them get too much and then they get shut down. I've been in two that have been shut down. Really? I've only been in one that sh- got shut down. Actually, I've been in one that got shut down and then I heard about the New York one. That got sh- I was in the LA one. It was called Pussy Posse. That one got shut down too? Oh yeah, that one that one disappeared and it turned it like morphed into this other one that's like more about biz just about business. Mm. It's just business Very all business. LA. The New York yeah. one splintered off into several groups. I know. I think I'm in two of them. I'm in like five. <laughs> I'm in a know. lot. They're all too much. And yet not enough. <sighs> I don't know. I think enough. <laughs> There's like only two that I really like, if I'm being honest. And this, honestly, the smaller they are, the more I like them. Mm-hmm. They're be- They're worse when they become too many people. Yeah, they are. Because it becomes less like of a diluted. safe. Feet. Less of a space faith. And also it's a lot of people being a lot of like hacky people. Hey, also stop promoting your open mics in there. Well, see, I don't know. I don't know that I 100% agree with that because I actually like to know about female run open mics because I'm still doing oh, them. Okay. You're that's not fair. doing them anymore. No, that's a good point. That was very selfish of me. <laughs> um, I like to know about that. <laughs> I just want to see the post that I want to see. I know. <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, I yeah, that one I don't mind so much. I mean, I honestly prefer that to like promoting your show. It's like, I don't, I'm not, book me on your show. <laughs> like, this isn't actually <laughs> helpful to me. Like, I don't know. I'd rather go to an open mic. Like, I'd rather go to a female run open mic. So, I don't know. I gotcha. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, was there anything else How I was wanted your to week tell you? Other than I that. mean, it was pretty depressing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess before yesterday. I Yeah, I mean, it's been fine. I think... I think in general, this time of year is just hard because I'm outside, outside all the time so and it's just cold. Much. And I, I, it's so much that you're outside. It's really crazy. And I, I've been actually, so I've been working on my posture again. I, this is, happens like four times a year where I'm That's like, I'm really going to get into That's my a posture. That's a lot of the year. But I mean, I only do it for a week, but I'm really trying this time okay. and I think it's improved my mood walking these dogs. Also, a lot of my dogs are now 45 minute walks instead of 30 minute walks. Mm. And I enjoy it much more because it's like I get to really know the dog. You know what I mean? Like we no, really get to. Okay. <laughs> we get to like. Ex- I was like, wait, that's more time outside in the cold. Yeah. But when you're moving and you're not changing yeah. temperatures, like going uh, inside helps, and out, yeah. 
it's actually nicer. And by the end of it, like I take my gloves off. And these past couple of days have been like, they're cold, but not like that. Oh, those awful days. That, I mean, the end of December was really bad. Yeah. yeah it was yeah. really, really bad. But now we're like, I'm like exploring these little corners of the city with these dogs. That's fun. That is and fun. I'm changing my pot. Like my shoulders are back. And I'll have to work on my posture tomorrow. They're my- back and down. Walk. Like open heart. Yeah, back um, and down, shoulder blades. I'm and not good at my posture. I should be doing more yoga. I know. Oh, God. But who has the space? <laughs> who has the time? I mean, I can't. Well, I have the space, but I we have a downstairs neighbor who would be very upset with mm. any kind of <laughs> movement. I have a friend who's a yoga teacher, and she's always like, whenever you want to take yoga, come to my class for free, usually. And uh, I did, took her up on it once. But I just, it's hard. Classes are hard with our schedule. It's like, when do we have time for that? You know? Yeah. And who has a regular schedule? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. You know, some, some people do. <laughs> I don't know. It's crazy. It's a That's weird, so crazy. real world. Yeah, I don't know. Monday, I spent all day stressing and studying for this test. Uh-huh. And then I took the test and I feel better about it. And That's I still good. have one more to take. And it's two total there's two te- there's one civics and one language so i took this the civics, one civics okay and i still have to take the language the language one is like a four-hour test what um jesus has your brother done this already yeah he already took his both of his i really procrastinated when <laughs> do you find up. out if you pass i think they said it was 20 days okay that's not too bad and Damn, i haven't taken a test like, in so long I was so good at tests. Were you? I was so good at school. Fucking, why can't life just be school? You know what I mean? (laughs) Why can't someone give me homework and I do the homework? You mean like a book report on like a woman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every week. Perhaps. That'd be great. That's why I like the podcast. We've talked about this. But it's true. Um, Welcome to Well Behaved. Oh, yeah. This is a podcast about women in history who you probably haven't heard of. But now you will. I'm Molly Rubin Long. I'm Ariel Elias. Um, yeah, and this is this is us. That was the chatting portion. But I feel like chatting with you because I haven't seen you in so long. I know. But I guess we should do the podcast. Let's do the podcast. Yeah, I'm about sleep women in history <laughs> who we would have fucked. Or what? Whatever. I don't know. I was thinking of like if uh, we had like the word fucked in our title how more people would listen to it (laughs) the shade is real (laughs) um it's not about one specific okay (laughs) okay why don't you go ahead and tell me your story tell me your story oh god i do not condone this um all right my person is eleanor of aquitaine um of accutane accutane (laughs) eleanor of accutane she invented accutane for all the women with hormonal acne i gotta say that is one thing that i that's one of the groups we're in is the beauty group and i do feel very grateful for my life that i never had like that cystic acne thing that's hard it's really hard hard. people don't talk about that that's a tough that's a tough life yeah all right anyway um (laughs) i feel blessed about that but you know i also um can't fit into any pants because of the sh- the lumps around my middle so here we are there's pros and cons hey, um, i broke my overalls yeah there you go. <laughs> i would not even be able to get in them all right here we go uh eleanor of aquitaine is uh was born in what is now the south of france they think you know the exact date of her birth but probably around 1122 um she was educated by her very cultured father william the 10th duke of aquitaine uh, so he her her only other brother died so he, she was like the presumptive heir she was very well versed in literature philosophy languages trained in court life so uh, by five they realized that she was going to be the heir she um, at the age of 15 her dad died and she inherited his title and his lands and so at the age of 15 she became the most eligible bachelorette in Europe oh <laughs> I smell a reality (laughs) show competition. (laughs) Will you accept this rose and all of my land? Um, She had so much money and stuff. So she's like like her dad died and they're like, okay, time for you to get (laughs) fucked. (laughs) Yeah, for real. But she like seems like she was like knew that was going to happen. She was pretty with it, I think. But yeah, that is a weird transition um, because immediately the king of France is named her guardian. And then within hours, 
the king of France is like, all right, you're going to marry my son. Uh. <laughs> um, I don't know. She's like, okay. okay. I mean, I think that's just what was happening. I think, I mean, it's creepy now because she was 15 and he was like 16. They're the same oh, okay. age. But it's, it's very, just children it's weird, marrying children. Just children marrying children. It's like cute. <laughs> pretty cute um that cystic acne meets cystic I acne know, they, no apparently she was very pretty that's what the word on the street was but anyway anyway not to say that you can't be pretty with cystic acne okay uh, well here we are um wow the shade is real <laughs> <laughs> uh, so many problematic comments already anyway so the king of france sent 500 men to tell her that she was going to marry his son too many and men. bring her to them. Just send one. <laughs> I know. You I need guess one messenger. Like, you should come here because here's 500 people telling you you have to. So this was his name is Louis uh, the heir to the throne of France. Louis the 7th. That's the king's son? Yeah the king's okay. son. So in July uh, of 1137 they're married and then just a few weeks later the king gets sick and dies so like within a f- within like very little time of her dad dying and her she gets married to the heir to the ki- the throne the king of France and then she becomes the queen of France. Um uh, very like within weeks um which is like a lot. That's like a lot to that's like you know yeah. at 15 I was like my braces came off. It was a big deal. It's a big life change. But this is a lot, you know. So anyway, um they moved into the Cité Palace in Paris which was described on history.com as drafty and unwelcoming. <laughs> I don't know. That just seemed like a weird detail to me. It's I'm sure it was very gorgeous. Cold. Yeah, but I bet it was like it was cold, cold with and cobwebs like, yeah, and like, and like, 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 like you dark. feel wind, but none of the windows are open very, for some yeah, reason. A, a, a chill to your bone. Definitely haunted. For sure. For sure. And um, so anyway, it, at Christmas of that same year, they're crowned king and queen. Um, the first few years of their marriage are, are rocky, both internally and externally. Well, it's hard when you're going through puberty (laughs) (laughs) and starting this new marriage right? and ruling France. That's right. Dropping bombs, dropping balls. It's a lot. Um, (laughs) so the first few years they like are fighting with their own vassals who are vassals is a word that I learned which is landowners who like basically pledge their allegiance like you know so they're fighting with these vassals they're fighting with the pope mm. not someone you want to be fighting with um, young king old pope uh, <laughs> Louis uh, King Louis made a lot of military and diplomatic mistakes that put him at sure. odds with these people he was just a he was just a mess he was just it seems like he was just a bad king there's one um example this like kind of culminated in um there was like a conflict and there was uh he his troops sieged the town of vitri and as the town was being sieged hundreds of innocent people fled to a church and then his troops burned the church and <laughs> killed them all so it's like a massacre of innocent people yeah. not like a chill thing for a king to do right not um, ideal no 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 not not a big and were fan. they um were the king were they catholic or do you know i feel like this is when like catholics they, are yeah. taking over yeah, yeah. and then this protestants are, are taking crusades. over and like, i think they they were a lot involved in a lot of crusades which is like i was about to get to so i think that means that they're catholic okay. right yeah so yeah so he felt so guilty about killing all those people that <laughs> did he pope... feel guilty about killing all the people or guilty about burning the church Ooh, good question um don't know don't know probably probably both i'm gonna guess both i mean that's a lot for a 17 year old to like (laughs) process um like i just wanted a new car (laughs) yeah or a new carriage i don't know what a car is (laughs) i just wanted a new horse horse. i'd say horse um they got around uh anyway so where the pope asks him to go on a crusade in 1145 he goes this was the second crusade uh and do you think he just thought that that was the official term for a cruise? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, let's go on a cruise. Yeah, a crusade. We'll have my ties. Um, this king was a real doofus. He, That's he, how I'm he picturing be, him. He would, he's like, seems like an idiot who would like a cruise. Cruises are a scam. Have you ever been on one? We went on one and 
when I was, it was like weird. It was like to Canada, which it sounds weird. I think we also went to Mexico. I don't remember where I went, but it wasn't that fun. It was like so claustrophobic. I don't know. I think it's cruises are, I don't know what, how we would convince people that like being trapped on a boat with n- very expensive booze is a good idea. Yeah. If you go, I feel like you would want it to be an all inclusive. No, mo- that's like the scam. That's the scam of it. They're all all inclusive with food, but then the oh, but booze not is alcohol. extremely expensive. Uh, so there's like my dad has a friend who's can you like bring your own. You're not supposed to, but my, I was gonna say my dad has a friend <laughs> who like brings IV bags full of it or something and like hides it in like this sketchy way because he like loves cruises. I'm like, I mean, it's too much. Is this the friend that you're going walking with no, tomorrow? Not that that'd one. be a great walk. It would be a great walk. <laughs> Different one. I'm, there will be stops for beers along the way. I'm sure. Um, anyway, so he, they go on the second crusade and Eleanor decides to join him on the crusade uh, to recapture Constantinople and Jerusalem from the Turks. But it's a huge failure militarily. It just is not really working out. Along the way, apparently she like flirts with maybe Fox, her uncle. Mm-hmm. And uh, Louis gets very jealous of that. And just basically, she like thinks that going on this crusade will like be a great thing. And turns out to be like just like he's failing. It's boring. She's hooking up mm-hmm. with other people. The whole they're it's just like, prom. like yeah. oh my god, it's exactly <laughs> like my prom. I spent the whole thing crying in the bathroom. Um, sorry, mom. <laughs> I hated my date. Anyway, but uh, so. Yeah, so they like they grow apart on this crusade. It's not a good, not a good thing for their marriage. Mm. Um, also, he was mad at her for not giving them a son. They had two daughters, but he was like, which is like such a weird concept that people that like men used to be like, you didn't give me a son. Like it's your fault. It's like what? That's not how it works. Um, not at all. But like spoiler, actually- she gets married again later and has like five sons. <laughs> also, <laughs> I think biologically, it's the like male part that determines the sex oh really because only like because women have two x chromosomes Mm. and men have an x and a y and so that's where you get the y chromosome from so it's his fault you're a scientist i like any science where it's his fault (laughs) (laughs) feminist biology with aerial science (laughs) that's really funny um but anyway so uh, so he's like, fuck you. You didn't give me any sons. Right. He's very mad. And, but also like is jealous and like it's just a messy marriage. And so for several years, they try to get an annulment. Um, their marriage is falling apart. His like king kingship is is like criticized. And in 1152, they finally are granted an annulment on the grounds of, OK, get ready for a big word. I'm going to mispronounce consanguinity, consanguinity. You want to guess what that means? I'll give you a guess. Sanguine. Uh, that they're related? Nice. <laughs> yeah. So um, they were, re- they're related by blood, which is, uh, which like that I wasn't like a problem to get. Royals. Right. It is. But I guess it was just like an excuse. It was like the excuse they used to get married because then she's single for like two months and then remarries someone who she's more closely related great, to. Great, great. <laughs> it was like truly just an excuse to get divorced. Um, he, she gets obviously lots of offers because she's still very like, you know, popular. She's like, I'm inbred, but I've got mm-hmm. power. Yeah, she's got power, money, land. She got it all. Um, but yeah, so they she marries within two months this guy, Henry, who's the Count of Anjou and the Duke of Normandy. Uh, there's also a rumor that she slept with his dad before she married him and mm-hmm. that his dad, his dad, like, pro- like, uh, made sure that she was like lustful <laughs> for him or something. something he was making weird. sure that the pussy was good. <laughs> he made sure the pussy was good. Um, I mean, you he know. was also t- 11 years younger than her. Henry was? Uh, yeah. Henry, or the, her, okay, her not husband the dad. was 11 years younger than, than her. Well, good. Um, Wait, and how old is she at this point? Uh, I forget exactly. I think she's, she's just in her marrying 20s. another fifteen-year-old. I think she's in her twenties. I think he's like. I think he's ma- he's like in his late teens, and she's like in her late twenties. Okay, I think. Um. So anyway, uh, and then within two years of that, they are crowned 
the king and queen of England. So she was already the queen of France and then she remarries and now she's oh. the queen of England. So she's the queen of both. Well, no, she because she abdicate. got divorced. Okay. She had to give up her. It's like Countess Luann is no okay. longer a countess. That's a reference for just the gays and the gals who watch the housewives. But here we are. Um, <laughs> no, but so okay. she, yeah, she had to give up her like queenship of France, wow. but then she just married the guy who became the king of England. So she, this is f- like, whatever, spoiler, I guess. But so in her life, she marries two kings and she has two kings. Uh huh. Isn't it's, that pretty cool? Yeah. She's just like a king machine. <laughs> <laughs> and like two dudes marry her and then become I'm king, a king. And she also pops out two kings, which is pretty tight. Um. Anyway, so this one, this marriage is like slightly more successful at first, but still has a lot of drama. Living for the drama. Got um, between, lady Facebook group level drama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. It seems good at first, and then it just implodes. Um. Between 1152 and 1166, they have eight kids. Like I said. They have five sons, Jesus. three daughters. Only uh, seven of the kids live to adulthood. That's one pretty of them, good. Yeah. Seven out of eight. One of them, one of the For sons the dies at like 12th century. Yeah. Also, I, I do. I know I said this before, but I think it's pretty funny that her husband was like, you can't give me a son. And then she just marries a different guy who becomes king and gives him five sons. Yeah, because <laughs> it was his fault. <laughs> Super funny to me. Um, anyway, it's... Uh, it's unclear like how much political influence she had with Henry, but it's probably some because she was like so smart and like self-assured. Um, but in 1167, she separates from him uh, and moves to her own land in Poitiers, France. <sighs> That's such a um, and for like a bunch of years, she just lives between 1168 and 1173. She lives on this land. And this is the part that's a little confusing. So she's, she, it's rumored. It's, it, there's a leg, there's a legend that she created this thing called the court of love. Now, basically it's a little confusing what this is, but what it seems like is she was the catalyst for, this thing called courtly love to be included in a lot of poetry and literature that followed. So there's this thing called courtly love, which is not Courtney love. (laughs) It sounds so similar. (laughs) It's literally the opposite. Courtly love. Courtney love is a, is like a crazy maniac (laughs) and courtly love is like a musician and a musician, but like, she's like very like punk rock and like wild and courtly love is literally about, uh, chivalry and like knights doing things for ladies to prove themselves. Like that whole Mm. like middle age, like romance of like knights and ladies and like deeds and, and like manners and chivalry. It's all like this, that whole literary, literary movement is like, supposedly it already existed kind of but because of her influence and like her popularity and everything uh and and the fact that she would invite troubadours troubadours are like uh these composers and performers of lyrical poetry uh she would invite them to to her like property and they would sing songs so she's kind of this like patron of the arts of this of this chivalrous uh courtly romantic literature and poetry um and then there's also so there's so on, i think that that part seems like solidly true and then there's this whole thing about how she created the court of love which is literally a bunch of women like including one of her daughters they just like get together and like judge on matters of love <laughs> like people like people would come to them i guess and this is the story people would come to them and like be like we have uh, it's like dan savage of the ages or whatever it's like the, we have a problem and then she'd be like okay this is how you solve it or whatever Which is like maybe don't take love advice from the woman who married two teenagers <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean she was one the first time so like whatever but no i see what you mean um but they <laughs> did both become kings so like maybe do listen to her <laughs> maybe that's a good point too that's um, yeah. anyway but like there's one example of uh of someone who came to them and said like is love possible in a marriage and that all the women were like it's not likely (laughs) like like an eight ball (laughs) so right it was like a magic eight ball of the day and uh so basically like they're not sure if this is true because there's just one this like one 
constable or whatever this guy named andrew who wrote who like recorded it and wrote a book about the whole thing but otherwise there's not really evidence of this so the other theory is that it is true that this happened but that it wasn't like that it was sort of just like a parlor game and it was which sounds more realistic like what it was so on the one hand she did you know promote all this this like whole genre of poetry and literature um which kind of was the catalyst for its popularity and then she also potentially like held this court of love during her time in Poitiers um so she let me see um okay so then this is where it gets like so this is like a cool fun period of her life this was I was just thinking about how this is her dirty 30s. This is her dirty 30s. I was thinking yesterday um, when I was talking to that friend about how um, they, this is hard and everything's scary and sad about how like I peaked in New Orleans about how I had this like incredible time in my 20s when I was living in New Orleans and everything was so fun and good and that it's really scary to think I'll never have that again. But then reading um, Eleanor's story has been really inspiring because she really has a change. The, her whole life, she goes through a lot of phases. It's like a lot can happen. Yeah, I've been having a some. I was thinking about this in the shower today of mm. I think part of why it hurts so badly now in particular is because like I'm approaching 30 at, which is an arbitrary yeah thing in my head but I think like the like those 30 under 30 lists or whatever like even though I know realistically that doesn't matter it still gets into my psyche yeah and so I see 30 as this age where I should have reached more Something, and I should have yeah. done more and so if I don't reach it by then then like I'm a failure and and whatever but then I but yeah then I like think about like I wasn't kidding when I said like then I think about these women who like yeah. did these amazing things at these yeah, some like of them did throughout really their young, lives <laughs> some of them but, did yeah. but also some of them died when they were 27 yeah so like you know it's give right. a little get a little right so anyway but so the next phase is kind of a bummer but uh 11 so in 1173 uh two of her sons kind of collude to use a topical word, um, <laughs> collude in a plot against their dad, and she decides to help them. Um, it's unclear, like, some people think that they, she started it. Basically, like, the reason that she had moved away in the first place, and, like, the reason why she would want to help the overthrow of her husband, is because they, they, they think because his infidelity was, like, becoming very well known, and mm. in particular, he was, um, he was like dating this woman named Rosamond who's like in I guess a bunch of literature as like such a beautiful woman and then some and then one source I saw said that they think that she was like part of the cause of her death <laughs> it's like real dark I don't know about that <laughs> but anyway so she's like yeah I'll support my sons I love my sons and I hate my husband so here we go but the plot <laughs> failed unfortunately um and so she is arrested and spends 16 years just moving between castles in England basically she's basically a prisoner yeah. like a you know she's just like kind of a quasi prisoner because she like is not in a prison but she like doesn't house have any arrest. freedom and she doesn't have any like social yeah basically house arrest but like not her houses his houses um I mean I guess hers technically but like not places that she's it's comfortable like, this isn't my castle yeah different it's castle different castle you know whatever what did they say about that other one drafty this, and unwelcoming this yeah this isn't the drafty and unwelcoming that i am used to right um so in uh 1183 one of the sons that revolted against his father uh his he was also henry they called him young henry um oh. he gets sick and dies oh. uh, after years of trying to fight his dad and on his deathbed he begs for his mom's release the king like quasi releases her under guard still not great and chick resumes some of her duties as queen but still isn't quite like free and then in 1189 henry ii dies and their son richard which is her favorite son um succeeds him and his basically like one of his first acts is to free his mom from mm. prison and give her full freedom and uh at this point she's in her mid 60s which is like very old yeah. for that time um but this is when she 
this is the inspiring part. This is like when she becomes like the most politically active. She um, helps organize his coronation. She rules as regent in his name when he goes to lead the Third Crusade, which had like just started when Henry died. Um, she, he was, Richard was captured by the Germans on the way back from the crusade and she helped negotiate his release. Um, when he returned to England, uh, he obviously took over for her, but then he died not too long after in 1199. So 10 years later, this is Richard the Lionheart, by the way, which I feel like I had heard of. Cool Um, name. Yeah. She, so then she lived to see her second youngest son, John become king which is like she like lived through she lived through so many so kings. many kings that she was like married to or had um and so at this point she's like almost 80 years old Jesus she's worried about the decline of her legacy like her of her house basically um and so she decides at the at, in her late 70s to cross the Pyrenees to go collect her niece and tell her niece that she has to marry the son of the king of France so there can be peace between England and f- the Eng- English and French rulers after she's gone. Um, and she, and then there's like this whole plot where her grandson, who was like, he was the son of one of the, like, whatever, her grandson. <laughs> it's confusing. <laughs> but basically, her grandson tries to overthrow her son. And uh-huh. she's the, the one, king. the king, and she's the one who like defends the king's like land. So basically, he tries to overthrow Anjou and Aquitaine, which is like, you know, Henry's home and her home, you know, and he tries to overthrow it. And she's like, no, these are not, you can't take them. And so basically, it's like his John is just like not doing shit. And his mom like saves him when she's 80. Um, wow. Well. And then she... What a tiger mom. Yeah, super tiger mom. Um, And she, yeah, and at the age of uh, 80, she retires as a nun in the Abbey of Fontevraud. She just becomes a nun? I guess you could do that back then. Yeah. Especially if you were a queen. Plus, like, like, when you're 80, you're done fucking. I think it's like a retirement home. Yeah. More than anything is my guess. Um, Yeah, it's not like you're fucking. You just, like chill in like a nice like abbey and like read books um and yeah so she retired there as became a nun and she died at the age of 82 she was buried next to henry and um wait henry her her husband who who imprisoned her yeah cool which feels that's kind of rude yeah um and i guess like right after she died historians like only focused on her like flighty youth years and like Mm. kind of misrepresented her but the nuns who uh wrote her like eulogy i guess said she was beautiful and just imposing and modest humble and elegant there you go and also there's a movie about this called the lion in winter which is a 1968 movie where Catherine hepburn plays uh eleanor of aquitaine so that was my person wow that was very royal. Very royal. Uh, okay. All right. Um, all right. We're starting with the great bike craze, bicycle craze of the gay 90s. What? Uh, do, 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 do. Um, okay. So in the 1890s, um, there was this like crazy shift in how people saw bicycles because there was like this new technology. It was called uh, a safety and it did something to bikes that I didn't understand, but oh, it, shoot, I have to say my sources. Oh yeah. 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 Say your do sources. that now. Okay. Wait, yeah. but pause on safety. How did you hear about her? Why did I just you just like Googled her? around like some lists and found her. Okay. History.com, Wikipedia, BBC.com, Britannica.com, British Heritage.com. Great. And okay, Thank you for sorry. remembering. Somehow it's like we do it every week and it's I forget remember. it every time. Okay. So bicycle, there's like a new technology. Okay, there's this new technology and then everybody's like, oh shit, we should get bikes. And it became like everybody's, it, they were still super expensive, but people were like, whatever, we just want the fucking bike. And so everybody, all these rich people are buying bikes. Everybody's buying bikes. And then all these manufacturers are like, well, we should open up bike 
uh, factories or whatever. And so there are like all of a sudden like 300 manufacturers making bikes and that brings the price way down. And then the normal people can now buy bikes. Um, It's like what happened with cars. Yes. And it brought independence for people where like, like all of a sudden people were able to travel to nearby towns and then return the same day, which they couldn't do with trains. Right. Um, they, because there were so many bikes, they created like these like bike paths along the railroad Mm. and it became like, like for women, especially because this was during the Victorian time when women were supposed to be like very boring basically and like docile and suddenly they could ride bikes and they had this newfound independence and they had been wearing these really really long uh, skirts Mm -hmm. and with the bikes they had to shorten their skirts and so that's how women started wearing pants and like shorter skirts and stuff and being like slutty uh susan b anthony said that bicycling had done more to emancipate women than anything else in the world so everybody's really into bikes and also in 1887 this guy named thomas stevens had bicycled across around the world so everybody's just like damn really bikes are cool yeah and how do you get it over the oceans boats i mean yeah you take it on a boat Mm. and then you just start riding again but so everybody's biked across the country I know. So this person, this woman made me think of you a lot. (laughs) Um, And also there's nothing to do in the 1890s. Like there's, it's just like, there's no movie theater. Like, what are you going to fucking do? So people are like, oh, we can go for a bike ride. Um, Yeah, that's a fun thing to do. Yeah, I enjoy it. So according to legend, in 1894, nothing to do. And there are these two rich as hell guys in Boston who are sort of just egging each other on and talking about how like women are the fairer sex and um, like how women aren't shit Mm -hmm. and so one rich guy is like you know I don't know about that like I think women can do anything men can do like just sort of like egging this other dude on a real Annie Oakley vibe yes and the other guy is like do you want to bet? And he's like, yeah, let's bet. Because again, nothing else to do. So they make a $5,000 wager that a woman could not do what, uh, what Thomas Stevens did that a woman couldn't bike around the world. Um, and they gave a time limit of 15 months. And that's when Annie Kubchovsky a.k.a. Annie Londonderry comes into our story. So Annie... Okay, sorry, I was putting my hair up, but what's with her many names? Okay, well, you'll find out. But her her real name is Annie Kupchowski. That's that's what she was named. That's what she was born with. And then later changes it to Annie Londonderry. But so she's this she's this Jewish do a girl. Great dairy in England. Oh my god. <laughs> well, it's spelled like like dairy, oh, wow. like D R Y. Okay. Well, this is a audio audio medium. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do they have good dairy there? No. Nah, well, I mean, I know in, in Ireland the the dairy the like chocolate and the cheese are really good. Did better. you know that um, like a gallon of milk? contains uh the milk from hundreds of different cows and and like like a single drop can contain milk like molecules of milk from different cows and so if you buy like chances are you have bought milk i think there was i just listened to a radio lab about this but chances are you've bought milk from like you've you've had milk from the same cow like multiple times in your life does that make sense yeah just a little fun fact that's a really fun fact also disgusting anymore yeah well that's a ground ground beef is also the beef from many different cows yeah i was thinking about not eating i don't know what i was thinking about veganism and then i was like no but (laughs) well 
Good luck with that. It's hard. So Annie is a Jew from Latvia. She's born in 1870 Mm -hmm. in Latvia. And then when she was five, her whole family moves to the United States. They move to Boston. She becomes a citizen. And then when she's 17 years old, her dad dies. Because Mm. in these stories, somebody dies. Yeah. And then a year later, she marries... uh, No, maybe that's why I'll never have any success. Because like... All the people really close to me um, just are living. Here. Yeah. Yeah. You haven't been through that adversity of losing somebody. Yeah. No, I don't think that's I think you'll be <laughs> just fine. There are Thanks. plenty of people who don't go through something horribly, true, horribly. True, true. True. Also, I'm sure you have other trauma in your life. Yeah. You still know it. I'm working out in therapy. Good. Anyway, but her trauma is her dad dies. <laughs> her dad dies. And then she marries this Orthodox Jew mm. named... <laughs> named Max and he's a salesman they have three ki- three kids they're sh- like in a very short amount of time um, and they're struggling to make ends meet and then Annie hears about this wager and she's like oh yeah I want $5,000 for sure and also I want to get the fuck out of this house with these three kids and this dude I married when I was 17 yeah so she and her kids at this time are five, three and two. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, get out of there. Um, and then they uh, they were like, do you know how to ride a bike? <laughs> and she was like, I'm a fast learner. So uh, so she immediately starts garnering attention because she in addition to this being kind of a crazy thing she's mm-hmm. also really good at promoting herself mm-hmm. and that includes uh, a lot of lying and just sort of like making up this legend so a lot of people suspect that those two rich guys never actually existed it was a story that Annie made up because it raises the stakes oh. so that there never was five thousand dollars at stake she was just like I want to get the fuck out of here hmm. I want to ride a bike around the world I'll make up this story interesting and I'll do this so um but it works because immediately the Londonderry Lithia Spring Water Company gave her a hundred dollars in exchange for her putting a little placard on her bike Mm -hmm. and going by the name Annie Londonderry Mm -hmm. and she was like great because my last name Kopchevsky was Jewish as hell yeah it's like it's like not even Jew- it's Eastern Europe. It's more like where's she from again? Latvia. Latvia. It's more. It feels more Latvian than Jewish. But I think the Latvian immigrants that were coming over were Jewish. Oh, okay. Like it wasn't, you know, yeah. th- it wasn't just everybody. It was like yeah. if you're Latvian you're in Jewish. Boston, you're Jewish. Um, so she, and she's just yeah, because also like Jews are trying to assimilate. Right, it's a big thing. Whatever. So she's super happy with it. So she leaves Boston on June 24th, 1894. All she has with her is her money, a change of clothes, and a pistol. Whoa. So first she bikes to New York, and then she makes her way to Chicago, and she got to Chicago. It took her three months. Yeah. So she gets there in September. And part of why it took her three months is because, one, her bike weighed 40 pounds. Oh, my God. It's this, like, huge-ass bike or whatever. She had lost 20 pounds by the time she got there. And I'm sure she wasn't, like, she was an immigrant. I'm sure she wasn't eating great before then. Um, And then she also had been wearing, like, what Victorian women wore. So she biked the whole time, like, with a corset in these. That's crazy. Isn't it? In these like long ass Probably, like, skirts, the saddle sores are rough. It's also like, I mean, corsets break your ribs. Like yeah. that's what they're they're designed to like make you not breathe. This is crazy. So when she gets to Chicago, she's like, "Fuck this! I'm absolutely not doing this anymore." She exchanges her bike for a boy's bike, which is half the weight and none of the brakes. Uh, then she takes off her corset and starts riding in boys' clothing. So she's like, all right, I'm good to go. Nothing can go wrong from here. And then she realizes winter is coming, <laughs> and she's in Chicago and was supposed to ride west. She's like, that's not going to work. Mm-mm. I can't go through the mountains. I can't go through the Midwest in the winter. No. So instead, she goes back to New York <laughs> and hops on a ship to... 
somewhere in France that I'm going to mispronounce. Le Havre? Sure. H A V R E. H A V Havre. Yeah. Yeah, that. Um, and then she gets there and customs in France is like, okay, so you say your name is Annie, but you're wearing boys clothes with a boys bike and you're very in shape. So we don't believe you that your name is Annie and we certainly don't believe that you're a woman. So they take her bike and they take her money and they label her as a neutered being, which apparently is a category that you can be in France. I guess if, like, you're androgynous. In the turn of the century. They would, yeah. I don't think you would be that anymore. No. I think most of France is neutered beings now. They're just, like, <laughs> very chic. Very, like, you know. Yeah, everybody's very flat-chested. Everyone's... With sharp shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, Everyone a, looks like a boy. <laughs> like yeah. Everyone looks like well, a Well, everybody looks boy. like they could be anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, with, like, their short... Cool Andrew, haircuts. Androgynous, yeah. Yeah. But like you still want to kind of like make out with all of them. Oh, yeah. For sure. So Annie then just manages to like charm her way out of this and like charms her way back into good graces. She doesn't get her money back, but she does get her bike back and then decides to get the fuck out of that town. And uh, it takes her two weeks, but then she bikes to another town in France. Marcel's Marcel Marseille Marcel. Marseille thank you and at that point like word had gotten out that there's this like mysterious American woman who's just biking mm. and like wears boys clothing and like mm. oh me oh my so she takes advantage of this because she's out of money mm. and she starts telling all kinds of stories about who she is and lying and just like gets all this like a lot more sponsorship money because people are like that's amazing and Mm -hmm. hilarious and journalists start to write about her um so here are some of the things that she claimed to be and this is just in france that she claimed to be an orphan an accountant a wealthy heiress a lawyer a harvard medical student the inventor of a new method of stenography that, which reminds me of in Romy and Michelle's high school reunion when they're just like, we'll just say we invented the post-it. Post it. Yeah. <laughs> like nobody Genius will ever check movie. up on it. Because it's like, yeah, who's going to know? Uh, the cousin of a congressman and the niece of a senator. Wow. And that's when being related to a congressman or a senator was like that's something like you'd want to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so like most of the journalists knew that she was full of shit, but they were like, well, this shit sells. So, like, we're writing it, and it's great. And then she went on to travel to Alexandria, Colombo, Singapore, Saigon, Hong Kong, Shanghai, and Japan. And we know for sure that she did go to those places because uh, Annie had to get the signature of the U.S. consul in each location. Mm. So um, the only thing that, like is sort of suspect is how much biking she actually did yeah. and how much she just like rode a train with the bike. Cool. 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 So, but like, whatever, who cares? She's still, even if she didn't ride the bike the whole time, it's like, well, she still traveled the world by herself Yeah. in this time when women were seen as these very delicate beings. Absolutely. So then she makes her way back to the U S um, via, she goes through San Francisco And then bikes down to L.A. And at this point, Annie was like a fucking legend Mm -hmm. because like she came back and like, you know, made this like heroic journey across. And so she's giving lectures. How long did it take? Um, All in all, it took. Let's see. She got back. She gets back to where she like to Chicago, September 12th of the next year. And she left in June. July, August, September. So uh, 15 months. Oh. Which is also part of why, like, oh, you made it just under the, just yeah. in time? Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, she, so she's giving these lectures, like, for when she rides from place to place, mm-hmm. because, like, that's entertainment now, and she has all these stories 
from being in these faraway lands that nobody had ever been to before and she's just like lying her ass off (laughs) but everybody's having fun and nobody's getting hurt it's like a harmless lie whatever Uh, she claimed that she hunted tigers in India with German royalty Uh, she claimed that she was nearly killed in Asia because they thought she was an evil spirit (laughs) Which, like, maybe they did. Yeah. Maybe they... I mean, all of this is, like, who knows what's true. And <laughs> I don't think she hunted tigers with German royalty. <laughs> but I do think it's totally possible that she went to China and somebody called her a white devil. And she was like, they're going to kill me. Yeah. Um, she said that she had gotten mixed up in the Sino-Japanese War, where she was taken captive in a Japanese prison after getting shot in the shoulder. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's like, we can see your shoulder. It's fine. (laughs) But what really did happen is that one night in El Paso, she was giving a lecture and in the audience was this outlaw named John, John Wesley Harden, Mm -hmm. which like, I don't know if that's somebody who I'm supposed to know or not. No, this like the thing that I read, most of this is based on her, I guess it's her great, her great grand nephew wrote this uh account because he decided to like retrace her trip um and oh, wrote about cool. it it's very cool um but so this outlaw john wesley harden is listening to her lecture with his lover with his gay lover named helen <laughs> and um and during the lecture so like it turns out that her lecture was their alibi because during the lecture, Helen's husband was being murdered by four men who John had hired. Oh. Or Wait, like his other. Again? So like John and Helen are this gay couple. Yes. But Helen is married to another man. Oh. Not like married, married, married but, but like you know. With. Um and so while they're at the lecture, oh, Helen's husband is being, being murdered, murdered by somebody that John hired. Wow. And they're just like, we'll go to this lecture and we'll be like, you we know, we're here. People saw us. Right. Exactly. An alibi. Um, and then uh, and Annie was almost killed when a horse pulled carriage almost ran. Was that the gay down? part of the gay craze of the, what was it called? The bike <laughs> yeah, craze the gay nineties. The, the great bike craze of the gay nineties. Yeah, this is the gay part. Yes, <laughs> this is the gay part, and she's the bike craze. Um, what was it? A horse? Then? Yeah, like a horse-drawn carriage almost ran her down on her bike. That's... I guess, and she almost died, which is scary. But uh, it's not as scary as cars, right? Right. Yeah. Right like unless you were behind the horse and it was like kicking you off your bike i don't know whatever she did an amazing thing she keeps then like traveling east she makes it back to chicago on september 12th 1895 she's like very famous and fantastic and everybody wants to hear her story and and da 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 da. um i don't know i don't think she ever collected the five thousand dollars because it didn't exist right but she got she, all sponsorship for long. She got all of these sponsors and she then like She was did like this. the first like social media influencer. She I she would have been so good at social media. Wow. Because she was just like shameless about promoting herself. Yeah. Had no problem with it. Damn. And just made everything up. That's awesome. It's so great. <laughs> so then she moved her whole family to New York. Because and she becomes a journalist. She starts writing for uh, the new. I forget. I forgot to write it down. But the new world something. Whatever. Like Mister. I forget his man. I really didn't do enough research. <laughs> but you had to study Spanish. The guy, Pulitzer. Like oh. whatever his first name is, Thomas. I oh, want to say. Don't know. Yeah. Okay. So it's like his newspaper. Oh, okay. That so she good. becomes a journalist for him because he's like, oh, you lie a lot. Come write for me. <laughs> um, but she does that and she's like earning more money than Max. Um, but then she just kind of like faded into obscurity because like time went on and people didn't like people stopped caring about bikes. Yeah. And like all these all these plants shut down because it was a boom. Yeah. And then, like, motorcycles came along, and then cars came along, and, like, it just wasn't that sexy yeah. anymore. So then in 1947, she died, um, and there was no, like, mention of her accomplishments in her obituary. Mm-hmm. 
Like, even, I guess, like, her family just didn't... I mean, I don't know. The kids were really young when she did this. And yeah. also, I kind of imagine if you're a kid and your mom just leaves for a year when you're five, you're like, yeah. hey, fuck you. Like, I'm your yeah. kid. You yeah. can't just leave me. Um, and like so it wasn't... Part into, of having a kid. You what? It's the worst part of having a kid. You can't just leave them. Yeah. And, like, the, this, like, article that I read, like, said... That when she left, she like waved goodbye to Max and called him the first Mr. Mom. And I rolled my eyes very hard. Because <laughs> um, there's no way that that was no. the first. Also, like, no. he's, just, like he's just being a dad. If so, she would have been really good at blogging, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she would have been. It's like, remember when we tried to keep a blog when we went on our... We did pretty good. We did good for the first half. And then we were like, we're very tired. Really? Did we not write? Yeah. Like, we wrote, I feel like we wrote one every few days for the first half oh really yeah and then we kind of fell off but oh. it was a long we did trip. our best we really did i think if we did it again now we would oh be God. much better about I it i want to do it again doesn't your dog have cancer what the hell great question <laughs> that fucking dog faked cancer she really did i wanted to do a joke about how i think of bamford as like um a boyfriend who's like holding you back <laughs> <laughs> but I love her so much. I know, yeah, well, that's what they all say. <laughs> no, oh I mean, God. at this She's point. like, if you leave me, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, so like, so for those of you who don't know. <laughs> Ariel's like, dog has fake cancer. Okay, so like two years ago, my dog had two very long seizures. And I took her to the vet and they were like, it's probably fine. She's probably just allergic to something. But just in case, we'll like do some blood work. And then it turned out that she had insulinoma and then they did an ultrasound and found these like tumors on her pancreas. And then they were like, we can operate, but like it's, it's going to be traumatic and it's not, it's just going to come back um, here. Take this medicine. She's going to die in six months to a year. And this was two years ago and she hasn't died. And I took <sighs> her back for another ultrasound and they were like, the tumors haven't grown, but they're still there. So now I think like maybe they were just benign tumors, but they're still pressing on her pancreas. So it's the whole. I'll tell you what we call her off mic because I can't say it on. But um, I will say this. As soon as that dog dies, we get to go on tour again. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> no, I think about it all the time. I'm patiently waiting, Bamford. <laughs> what She's, the hell? She turns six on Monday or Tuesday. Boo. She taught me how to love. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I guess um, she's cool. So that's it. So my source, that's uh, that's Annie Londonderry, a.k.a. Annie Kupchewski. Cool. Um, my sources were American Heritage, the Christian Science Monitor. Ooh, why? <laughs> because I guess her great grandnephew is a christian scientist oh no named peter <laughs> zutlin sorry to out all you right. peter but That's... of all the publications yeah um okay. and, and forgotten newsmakers and hmm. wikipedia how'd you one. find her so i was sad um <laughs> <laughs> and oh, no. uh i just googled uh crazy women in history Ooh, because i was like who was like crazy who is wow like who crazy. do people think is crazy and i think she was on a bustle article that sounds great a she bustle was pretty crazy she's fucking crazy she her. just lied for a year she was crazy or two she made up everything except she actually went on an adventure <sighs> should do that more i'm t i recently Why? i've been like well just embellish on the internet so people think <laughs> i'm doing well you know i used to be better about that about about making things seem better than, than they, they are, are yeah. yeah and it helps like... really you put it out there and then you believe it too yeah yeah it's like the secret <laughs> maybe i mean just a better posture yeah that's a good that. i'm gonna try that tomorrow on my 13 mile walk yeah Jesus. I, I will say after the first after the first day that I did like I mean, it's you painful. probably walk thirteen miles in a day. Yeah. Do you ever track on your phone? I or did anything? once and then I stuck because it like drains my battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um but I did one time maybe last year. And that was before you were doing it or was that how many walks you do now? I mean it was about pretty the same. average day. It's a, yeah, it was a pretty average day. I mean even how just, many miles was it when you tracked it? I remember it was more than 10. Yeah. I don't know exactly. It's probably about that. 
I mean, just from, I mean, in the morning when I, I walk Bamford and then right. I walk to the subway and that's already over a mile. Yeah. And that's before I've gone to work. Right. And then each jog you walk for 30 to 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's probably a mile. Plus each. there's the walking in between the apartments. How long does it take someone to walk a mile? 30 minutes? No, I think it's tw- like 20. Oh. So, yeah. So then, yeah, you're doing a ton of miles. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, and a lot of time, like, it's frustrating because a lot, some of my dogs are up by like 38th mm-hmm. Street. And then some of them are down by 31st Street. But they're not at the same time. Yeah. So I keep going back, back and, and forth. forth. <laughs> and so I have to annoying. cross some avenues because like some of them are in oh, park and some of so them are annoying. in second. And it's yeah. like, so it's, there's that. I walk a lot. Yeah. And yet still can't fit into these overalls. Dude, live your life. Those <sighs> what overalls a time. are meant for a small person. A smaller person. Yeah. Yeah. But I love them. They're very cool. I, I love them too. They kind of make me feel like Santa. They're beautiful. Just when I look down and see the, man, the velvetiness. Well, I'm going to keep wearing them. You should absolutely keep wearing them. Um, look out for that, everyone. <laughs> That's big. Big news. Big things. Oh, do you have any dates coming up? Um, not too much, but I we should plug um, All Female Reboot. Again, we're doing an Oscars show. When is the Oscars? Ooh, the Oscars are March 4th, I want to say. Really? Early, early March. Early March. Yes. Okay. Let me look at the calendar. So we're doing the Oscars show before the Oscars. Yeah. Okay. Which I think is is good, right? Yeah, People yeah, yeah. are going to forget about it once. Yeah, it's the fourth, I think, because it's okay. the first Sunday. Yeah, we're doing our show on the 17th at the Tank Theater at 8 p.m. Um, so come on out. February 17th. Then. Yes, February 17th. Um, this comes out on um, the 29th. January 29th, yeah. I don't think I have too much going on. Okay, well, I'll be at Club Coming, which I still can't believe is a real place, <laughs> on Wednesday, January 31st at 8 o'clock. Um, and, wow, I don't have anything next. And then uh, February 5th, on Monday, I'll be at Munchmore's at 8.30. Cool. Um, February 6th, on Tuesday, I'll be at The Stand. And hmm. that's it. I'll tell you about that later. Um, I also just realized we're doing a couple of sketches at a show at the People's Improv Theater. Call, I think it's called Milk and Cookies Ooh. on the 1st, February 1st at 8 p.m. Do so they have milk and cookies there? I don't know. I just, she said, out, Liz sent out a little email. They're just, we're just doing like three sketches. Oh, it's yeah, like a variety yeah. show. That would be so fun. So yeah, so I'm doing uh, a part in that. So there you go. Well, this has been good. And remember to keep keep making making history history and marry a lot of kings.